Can you imagine what a strange and empty place the world would be without trees? Trees are a familiar part of our surroundings. Year after year, we see the same ones growing in our parks and across the countryside. And we've all noticed that many trees change in appearance during the year. In the summertime, for instance, a maple tree is covered with green leaves. Later on in the autumn, the same tree has leaves of red or yellow. And still later in the winter, we notice that the leaves are gone and the tree is bare. And finally in the spring, we see new green leaves appearing once more. Just what are the changes that take place? How do these changes occur? These are some of the questions that Mr. Weber's class set out to answer. They decided to study some of the common trees near their school. They plan to follow the seasonal changes in these trees all through the year. Let's see what they observe. Let's discover what they learn about trees during the year. We'll look first at the white oak, one of our most common trees. In the early spring, we may think the branches are quite bare. But if we look closely, we discover small green leaf buds. Within each bud is a tiny folded leaf. Some of us have seen the leaf buds on an oak tree. But how many of us know that the same tree has flowers? These are the flowers of the oak. And these are the flower buds and flowers of the elm tree. We are seeing them now very closely. Like other flowers, the flowers of a tree develop into fruits with seeds. Each kind of tree has its own kind of flower. For instance, these blossoms of the elm tree do not look the same as these of the maple tree. Flowers are one way of identifying trees. This is a cluster of maple flowers seen very closely. This is the way we usually see the maple flowers on the twigs. Here is a tree with flowers that many of us will recognize. In spring, about the month of May, the cherry blossoms open. Part of the cherry flower develops into a cherry. We find the tiny fruit under the withered parts of the flower. Within each cherry is a seed from which a new tree may grow. Later in the spring, the cherries we saw developing from blossoms are almost fully grown and are beginning to ripen. In the same way that the cherries develop from flowers, the fruits of other trees develop too. On the elm tree, the flat dry fruits hang in clusters. The fruits of the maple have long thin blades that resemble blades of a propeller. These little wings carry the fruit with its seed along on the wind. And so in the spring, we'll find the trees have flowers, flowers that develop into fruits with seeds. Now, what about leaves? In the very early spring, when many trees are bare, we'll find that the white pine is covered with leaves. We usually call them needles, but actually they are narrow leaves. In the spring, we'll see the new leaf bud at the end of each pine twig. Since some of the green leaves, or needles, remain on the pine both in summer and in winter, we call this tree an evergreen. Often under a pine tree, we'll find empty brown pods that contain the seeds of the pine. These are called cones, and the trees that bear these cones are called conifers. Trees are either conifers or broad-leaved trees. The oak, the elm, and the maple are among our common broad-leaved trees. Their leaves develop in early spring. These are the tiny new leaves of the maple. Several leaves develop from each leaf bud. Although they are very small, we can see that each one has a definite outline, the familiar pointed pattern of the maple leaf. We know by the oval shape of these young leaves that they are leaves of the elm tree. We can see that these flat leaves are quite different from the narrow leaves of the pine. Newly opened leaves, such as these of the white oak, 
are among the most beautiful living things that we find growing in the spring. There are other living things too that we may discover as we look about us during the springtime. We find that many kinds of birds build their nests in trees or bushes. Some birds eat the insects they find in trees. Robins eat both insects and the ripe fruit of trees, fruit such as that of the cherry tree. When the fruit is ripe, it attracts birds. Robins, for instance, carry away some of the fruit and thus help to scatter the cherry seeds. Of course, a cherry tree attracts more than birds. Cherries are only one of the many kinds of fruit we get from trees. Now, in late spring and early summer, the growth of trees is most rapid. Every branch is covered with rich green foliage, full-grown leaves that we can study. Do you recognize these leaves that we saw opening in early spring? They are now many times larger, but they still have the maple leaf outline of five points, each point with a large vein. We recognize these familiar oval-shaped leaves as those of the elm. Every elm leaf has jagged edges, like the teeth of a saw. The green glossy leaves of the white oak are now full-size too. And what about the green acorns on the twigs? We've learned enough about the fruits of a tree to be able to guess that the acorns are the fruits of the oak tree. In late summer, the ripe acorns drop to the ground. Wherever there are acorns, we usually find squirrels gathering and eating them. Squirrels also bury many acorns. New oak trees may sprout from acorns that squirrels bury. As the warm weather of summer gradually changes to the cool, crisp days of autumn, most of the trees change from green to red or yellow or brown. As the days become cooler and drier, the leaves change color. They receive less water from the roots and they begin to dry out. In the autumn, we'll see the dry leaves drifting down to the ground. Down they come with every gust of wind, falling, floating, swirling, dropping by the hundreds from the branches. and piling up in deep layers on the ground. In late autumn, the branches are almost bare. But not all the trees lose their leaves. On evergreens such as the white pine, the green needle-like leaves remain all through the bright, cool days of autumn and on into the winter. Even in heavy snow and freezing cold, the pines stay green a colorful sight against the winter landscape. Though leafless in winter, the other trees are still interesting to study. In the maple, we see the branching structure very clearly. Now, the elm tree we have studied appears as a graceful parasol shape. And even without its leaves and fruit, we can recognize this tree by its bark the smooth, shiny, reddish bark of the cherry tree. In the winter, we can distinguish trees by their bark. The bark of each kind of tree has its own kind of color and surface pattern. Here's another clue we may find. Dead leaves still on the branches. Some leaves of the white oak remain on the tree through the winter. Near the oak trees, we may find the same squirrel we saw in the fall. Sometimes he digs up and eats acorns that he buried in the autumn. And so we've completed our yearly cycle, watching the gradual changes in some familiar trees, many changes that happen continuously through the seasons. But the story is not over. In the spring, as the earth is warmed by the sun and signs of life begin to appear, we can continue our story. We can go out and look for the new green leaves and delicate flowers. We can look for the lesson of life and growth, 
that we have found in following the seasonal changes in trees.